What is up Transformers family? Welcome back to another episode of George Reviews. Today on George Reviews, I'll be taking a look at Hasbro Transformers 1985 Decepticon Constructicon Scavenger. He is number five on our countdown and he is the fifth Constructicon listed on the catalog checklist. And speaking of the checklist, people have been asking me to bring back the checklist. I kind of dropped it to have the videos kind of roll more smoothly, but... It was requested, so now it is back. Let's check off Scavenger on our 1985 catalog checklist. Here is our checklist, and we got an updated and fine Scavenger. Uh, let's get Scrapper marked off, Hook, Mix Master, and now Scavenger at number five. So checklist updated. And let's move on. And so, as the story goes, Hasbro purchased the toy line from Takara. And the Transformers came from their Diaclone toy line. Scavenger came in, I believe he was like an orange color. My orangish, yellowish color. I'll put a pic on the screen. And Hasbro put the team together for the United States market. Made them Decepticons. Made them all green and purple. Packaged them on a blister card in the United States. The original Diaclone toy, as well as the U.S. remake of that toy, is based on or meant to resemble a John Deere 390 D-LC steam shovel. And the toy itself came packaged with one sticker sheet, one drilling machine slash arm piece for Devastator, one drill bit for that machine, one right hand that attaches to the arm, and one hand pistol. Here's the set in front of us, as clearly you can see it. And this is what we received from Hasbro in 1985 as a member of the Constructicons. And if you flipped over his blister card, you had a data file on the back of the packaging. And it told us a little bit more about Scavenger. And let's do it right now. It's Scavenger, Constructicon, Function, Mining and Salvage. Everything is worth something, even me. Definitely tried to prove his worth to his comrades by finding things of value. Whether it's digging up a hillside or a backyard. Only tolerated by Megatron because of his ability to use his shovel's magnetic, ionic, electrical, gas sensor to detect presence of fuels, materials, etc. As right arm module combines with fellow Constructicons to form giant robot devastator. His technical readout is as follows. Strength, 7. Intelligence, 2. Speed, 3. Endurance, 6. His rank, 4. Courage, 9. Firepower, 6. Skill, 7. So that is his file. And I just want to add something. They, When they wrote these guys, they didn't want everybody to be a, like a badass or extremely strong, extremely brave. But, you know, to kind of throw this guy in here, like, he's annoying and, <laughs> and all that. He's barely tolerated by Megatron and the squad, you know. Um, and that they kind of want you to, like, pity him a little bit. Where he says, um, everything is worth something, even me. And, you know, as a bad guy, that, that's kind of weird. But, you know, if you read the cards, I guess they, they really wanted to give all these guys different personalities. So anyway, let's get Scavenger off the turntable and take a closer look. Okay, here is the John Deere steam shovel. Let's bring him a little bit closer. Check out his detailing. He has like some compartments on the little back part right here. Whatever they're meant to do on a real steam shovel. Um, I have a stickers applied. Again, this is not a brand new toy. So some of the stickers would be off location or worn away or long gone. So that is my disclaimer for this figure. This is my vintage scavenger from my childhood he has come a long way i think this was the second version i had as a kid anyway back to the detailing you can see some pistons and here some hydraulic pistons on the side of the crane itself some like rope work electrical wiring right there some more piston work right here spinning around same thing on both sides these little things had a lot of detail it wasn't just like a little quickly stamped out mold he has teeth in the shovel for digging right there. And that's pretty cool. 
And I think that's it. No lights on the back. Uh, most of the detailing is in the shovel. And most of the articulation is in the shovel. There's a hinge here that allows it to come back this far. For this far is a second hinge here. We can bring the crane up. And these two hinges give it a wide range of articulation together. And then he swivels at the base, which is very cool. This was awesome. He did everything but actually roll. Get a complete 360 out of that. And they didn't put like any tiny wheels. I wouldn't expect these little treads to roll, especially back then. But they could have put a couple wheels on each side so we can get a little bit of roll on. But you just had to push this guy. Yeah, that's how it kind of functioned. But I guess they want you to keep it stationary and move the crane. So that's what you got out of it. And the stickers that I do have on here, got a Decepticon sticker here. A couple like little cautionary arrow stickers right there. And that's it for the crane mode. Anything else would be like the robot mode underneath. You have these ports here where you add the weaponized mode. And we have the rub symbol for 1985 right there. And it works perfectly. Bam. And that, that was kind of cool. As long as they didn't have sacrifice a Decepticon sticker for the rub symbol. I loved it. While in crane mode, Scavenger has a play feature as well as weapon storage. And the forearm, the right forearm to Devastator plugs on this port right here. And this is also where it goes in Devastator mode. But they turn it into a drilling machine. So he has multiple purposes. And th th this guy is a scavenger, a digger. And it actually gives this thing purpose. And he can mine for different materials or whatever. And it also fires. Bam. Then you can take it and bring it over here off of this port. There's two pegs right here, two ports right there. And you can put it right here. And when they say transform phase two, he actually has the parts for Devastator connected to his body, which is very cool and well thought out. And even a small handgun was stored on top of the vehicle. So you could technically store most of his weaponry in his vehicle mode or attack mode, whichever you prefer to call it. And it actually looks pretty good. So even if you never had all the pieces to form Devastator, he was still a pretty cool toy. All the Constructor Cons were kind of cool on their own. They weren't like the later Jassault figures that were supposed to be like better combiners, better technology story-wise. Um, these guys were cool on their own. All right, now to get Scavenger Transform, you just sort of tuck the crane away, even though we kind of did an in intro. Flip the legs down and the chest up at the same time. Rotate his feet forward. These are his feet. And pull his arms out. They slide out to the sides. They slide out to the sides. This one will eventually slide out to the side. There we go. It's an old toy you can hear. It's kind of rickety. And flip the head up. And here we have Scavenger. And let's take a look. Let's take a look at that face first of all. I'll get a zoom in on that. Here is his face. And he has this weird mouth plate. I think that, that was like a thing in Japan for robots. You know, we got Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime kind of looks cool either because we saw it all the time or it was just done better. But his doesn't look that cool. Uh, it didn't look cool in the animation. Here's a pic of that. But um, he does have a very interesting face. It's, it's not bad. It's just not uh, what I'm used to. Eyes are painted silver. He has a little bit of silver paint on his forehead. And he has some silver paint on that mouth plate. No true neck to speak of. And his head really doesn't clear his shoulder blocks that well. But mine actually has the stickers on it. Right here, you can see the chest stickers for the circuit pounds and the Decepticon logo right there. More stickers on the die-cast connector port right here. He has chrome on his chest. And that is pretty awesome because they could have, like, not chromed it, made it all purple or left it out. But chrome in the 80s was awesome. Purple plastic legs. He does nothing at the waist. And these two stickers right here kind of help the... Um, help you picture that this is waist area. And that was cool that they did that. Um, another waist sticker right here that I put on and survived all these years. He has feet, and in case you weren't sure these were his feet, they got stickers right here on the feet portions right there. And these his feet articulate, they spin 360 right there, and they actually rotate for whatever reason. 
hide at is there. Uh, I, when I and the little crane on his back, you can leave it up, you can leave it down. On the cartoon, sometimes it kind of hung around like a little tail, like a scorpion tail or something when he would run off screen. So either way. Oh, and his arms, 360 on that joint. And as far as his head articulation, we can put it back down for him looking down. And I guess he can kind of get some looking up. What's that up there? So, and he, him and Bone Crusher, they were the two least featured guys out of the six Constructor Cons. And they were the last two Constructor Cons I bought. I bought these two guys last, and I bought these two guys together. I bought Bone Crusher. Where's Bone Crusher? Here's Bone Crusher. And Scavenger, I couldn't wait to finish them. I was buying these guys my allowance every week. But by the time it was like two left, I, um, I bit the bullet, spent all my money, and bought these two together to finish off Devastator. But anyway, let's get his handgun in his hand. Let's take a look at it. It's pretty cool. I don't know if it has a name other than hand pistol, but they put some little detailing in this little hand pistol. Uh, whatever this is going on down here is some type of sight laser sight or something and it got the little block on top and it fits right in his hand bam let's check out his hand after I'm putting it in his hand you can see fingers molded in there a little bit of a thumb but definitely fingers and he can blast Autobots and speaking of blasting Autobots this guy <laughs> Out of nowhere is the guy who got the kill shot on Prowl in the movie. That is his moment. That is my Transformer moment. There's not many stories you could tell about some of the Constructor Cons because they never really did anything. But he killed Prowl in Transformers' movie. But this guy fired a shot. He ducked. Boom. Came up. Bow. Hit Prowl dead center mass in the chest. Prowl goes down in a fiery, horrible death, like burning from the inside out. So that, that's this guy's moment. So he wrote himself in the Transformers legacy and history. Oh, and he has some date stamping. I didn't check it out. It's kind of hard to see. I'm trying to see it through the monitor so I can read it better. And it pretty much, they all say Takarako LTD Japan. Uh, I think it says 1980. And 84 right in there so let's get this guy sized up and ran down real quick okay when I do my size up and run down I try to theme it and um, put a little comedy in it but I really got nothing for this guy I mean I liked all the constructor cars but he just wasn't he was just a, a regular dude you know he was almost like a background character but here we go here he is next to Combiner War scavenger representing super 7 and the Thundercat scale here's Chitara Representing the Marvel Legends, here is Prince Namor from Star Wars 3 and 3 quarter. Here is C-3PO and R2-D2. Here he is with G1 Frenzy Cartoon Rumble. G1 Soundwave Superior. Studio Series Hot Rod. Hot Toys Batman Michael Keaton. Wait, what? And you knew I wasn't going to finish this without Generation 1 Prowl back for a rematch look i got prowl every time you know whoever wrote that they was just like wrote it like decepticon shoots autobot kills them in the shuttle they couldn't have put any thought into that it should have been Soundwave or hell thundercracker or oh man it's been years and i'm still mad that scavenger got that kill shot but he's famous for it now all right buying tips for scavenger the first buying tip is you want to buy the whole Devastator Complete if you are buying these guys. Unless you only had Scavenger as a kid and you're only looking for Scavenger. In which case, you want to make sure he is complete individually. You want to make sure he has the pistol, the correct pistol. I think all these guys hold each other's guns. You want to make sure he has the right forearm to Devastator. Um, and if you can check, if you're in person buying, make sure the launcher mechanism works. But um, some people don't care about it. Make sure he comes with the right hand hollowed out fist for Devastator. And this piece right here tends to oxidize and rust. Mine has held up pretty good over the years. A little number two in there. I didn't ever notice that. This piece is die cast. Uh, make, Want to make sure his chrome is good or as good as can be. Or buy it to your liking. Maybe you just want to add one. Make sure the crane system piece is not broken. And that is pretty much it. He's considered to be one of the more fragile ones after Hook, this guy. Because people say this breaks out. But I've had a couple of these as a kid. And I never broke this little piece out. But I guess that's the thing. That's what the community says. I'm not sure about that. And hopefully you get one with the stickers intact. And that's about it. 
he has no authentic reissue individually carded. If you see this guy individually carded and they say Chinese reissue or just they say reissue, it is fake. The only reissues are the Constructor Cons coming to gift sets. There's two Takara gift sets and one Walmart gift set where this guy um, is reissued. So that's what you want to look at. I want to watch out for the fakes. There have been knockoffs over the years of these guys like the vintage uh, Diaclones. But I don't think the vintage G1 has ever been knocked off. So, so all you really want to watch out for. And I already told you my Generation 1 story about him killing Prowl. That's pretty much all he ever did, which was Gosh, huge. He which is, is a huge. cool figure on his own. His character, not so much. But that's all I got for you. I want to thank everybody for watching another episode of George Reviews. The Reviews of Every Toy has a story.